possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Sorry to say, angry people of the internet, it is going to be predominantly a football podcast. We're not going to make Kevin McStay discuss hurling. Um, we can make Maliki discuss it if we want, but we've all decided that it's really the football's where we're at. <laughs> so. You can try to make me talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> welcome along, as always, to Rory and to Maliki and to Kevin. Um, how is everybody doing? We are well. Very good. Um <laughs> As you regular listeners to this podcast know, Rory O'Neill makes editorial decisions on League Sunday. And I, as the editor of the RT website and the guy in charge of all the social media channels, has to read the bile and hatred that comes in the same that is. Um, so look, Hurling was was relegated to second yesterday, very logically. Um, and as Maliki Kirkham put it, the last Japanese uh, soldier in the jungle, uh, Anthony Daly. Um, even his column today was basically about why the hurling this weekend was no good. It was just one of those hurling weekends. That is almost an anathema to, I can never say that word, anathema, to the creed and culture of hurling. Without fire and brimstone and blood and thunder, the whole atmosphere feels almost fake and plastic when there's nothing really at stake. So that was our hurling coverage for this week, everybody. Um, we'll be it, back. All, it all flips on its head in, of a, course couple of course of, in a couple of weeks' time, and everybody just needs to count. And then all the football people will be giving out to us. But um, they won't. Can, Mikey, can I just say something about that, though? That, that the interesting thing about that, that uh, I, I am actually quite surprised. I shouldn't be surprised that people are angry on the internet, uh, at, especially at RTE. But... Um, I am a little bit surprised that hurling people are outraged that there was nothing on League Sunday or very little, uh, because this is precisely how hurling has organised its season. It has, it has, it took the decision, a very straightforward and independent decision, about four years ago, to take the jeopardy out of the league. The league in 2015, 2016, 2017 was a fantastic competition mm -hmm. because there was jeopardy in it, because one of the big guns could get and would get uh, relegated to Division 1B. And relegation was an actual uh, thing that could happen. They have the, I remember going to matches in those days and, you know, Clare would play, uh, we, Davy Fitz was over Clare and Eamon O'Shea was over Tipperary, I think I remember. And the two of them came in after a game down in Ennis and they were puffing their cheeks going, this is February, what are we doing? Like they were, they were <laughs> outraged, <laughs> outraged at having to flake at each other because, you know, like when, when there's jeopardy involved, Hurlan can't help itself. And the last 20 minutes of those games turn out to be barn burners and the teams hated, the big teams hated it. And so they have changed the leagues so that these games do not matter. They're glorified challenge matches. And I don't know how anybody in hurling could be annoyed that RTE aren't making a show in two hours of it on League Sunday on a Sunday night because they don't matter. Yeah. Be a tough and, watch. My, and, and Maliki, you're spot on. There is no jeopardy at one end yeah. and there's no incentive to yeah. win it on the other end. Absolutely. You know, like, I mean, what's the incentive to win it? Two you, weeks show your before, you, show, you show your hand two weeks yeah. before championship. I, in, in, a pre, in, a, in an interview at the start of the league, John Kiley said the quiet part out loud where he said that the league final is two weeks before we play Cork. Basically saying, I don't know who you think is going to be in the league final, lads, but we're not going to be in. Yeah. And, like, they, and, and they've, done yeah. their, they've done their job yeah. so well, they haven't even made the semi they, they They've lost, like, <laughs> Limerick lost all the matches that mattered in the league, yeah. or that supposedly yeah. mattered, yet they're still favourites to win the All-Ireland. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Like, these you are know? challenge yeah. matches. Yeah. I actually think it's a bit of an outrage that the GA are charging full price into them. Like, <laughs> genuinely. Like, 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 we're going to talk about the Football League now, and I can't it up last night just before I filed my last piece. Of the 32 teams in the Football League, uh, only eight have nothing to play for That's this fantastic. Sunday. That's fantastic. And two of those are Galway, who have been promoted, oh. and Down, who have been relegated. So there's basically only six teams that, you know, that, that have no, absolutely nothing to play for this weekend. And yet, you're charged the same into them <laughs> as you were charged into... Tipperary hockey and Antrim yesterday yeah, in a yeah. complete challenge yeah. match. Like it's ridiculous. Well, look, no one can accuse me of bias because 
Wexford are, you know, unbeaten in the hurling and heading for a uh, he- heading for a league semi final. And uh, what a we're not discussing it. And uh, our footballers are one of those six teams Maliki has mentioned because you can't get relegated from Division Four. So we're going to go to Division One. And that's the last mention of Wexford for today, unfortunately. Um, we're going to start with Dublin v Donegal in Croke Park. Uh, Eamon Stella's got her groove back. We're led to believe. Uh, or Dublin have, um, but uh, can I temper it by saying they were playing against possibly the most inconsistent team in Christendom, so reading too much into these tea leaves would be fraught with danger? No, I don't think so, because the quality was there. It was very evident. Uh, their top players, Howard, Fenton, uh, and the others, they were all moving very nicely, adding to the performance of the previous week. Uh, of course, I agree with you, Donegal are one of those just uh, inconsistent teams currently that, you know, I, I saw a piece, was was it by um, uh, Keith, uh, Keith Duggan, I think it did. Yeah, it, it was it? Keith on Saturday, I'd say. Kevin, Keith on yeah, Saturday, yeah. The Irish Times, and yeah. Uh, it was a very good coverage. And I, I'd actually pinpoint, uh, I won't say their demise, but where, where it all went awry on them was the defeat to Cavan in that weird Ulster final um, the, the the lockdown final when they were, mm. I think they were going for three Ulsters in a row, a, b- a big moment in any in any Ulster county's uh, progress. And even, even though the celebration was all about Cavan, the flip of that was how in the name of God did odds on favourites walk away from that game without the title end up? And since then, I just I just haven't seen it uh, with Donegal. Now, so that 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 puts in context. What they're at, they, they have they have great some marvelous players, of course. But Dublin were very good. Dublin were very good yesterday. I'm sure Maliki will agree with me. Um, they were very tidy on the ball. Um, they were moving. They were moving really, really well. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I was of of the view that it was always going to be a matter of time. And um, yeah, I think it was a very good win for Dublin. Uh, Dublin are like Leinster isn't going to kill them anyway, one way or the other. So Dublin, Dublin are in the mix. End of. Yeah. Um the the thing for them now, Maliki of course, is that they have a relegation playoff against your own Monaghan. Mm-hmm. And so as as well as Dublin may be moving, they're doomed because Monaghan are the Alliance Football League's cockroaches. They cannot be yeah. destroyed, they cannot be relegated. So <laughs> whatever the form and also they have a very good record against Dublin in the league, don't they? Yes, yes, uh, yes. I will be using all of these things to cheer me up through the week before uh, the inevitable twelve point beating in Clonus on Sunday. Um they are um, Dublin were decent yesterday. Kevin is right. Like now, Donegal were the best team in the first twenty minutes. Like they're mm. one four to two points ahead after seventeen minutes, and they were doing well. McBrearty had a great day. Like McBrearty scored one five from play, um, and was relatively fairly unmarkable. Now, um, yeah, the, goal, the, goal, the goal was the goal. Was and the goal was a fluke. Point absolutely, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. I no no question about that. But like he was. He was get. He made uh, even he if did. that had been a point, and he and he scored six points from play rather than one five. Like he he made he was getting in space no problem all day. Like was doing really well, and and Mick Fitzsimons was on him, you know. Um, they um Dublin were Dublin are yeah like they're getting back to some sort of normality. I think the way I've always looked at it with Dublin is that like other teams have ceilings, whereas Dublin have a floor. You know, like the Dublin can only drop so far, uh, and even if that, you know, they could wait, they could, they, they could potentially win on Sunday and still get relegated. You know, uh, so even if they do drop to Division Two, um, I don't. I never saw, even after they had lost their first four games this year, I still was going. Well, do I really see the All Ireland semi final weekend going ahead without Dublin? And in your heart, you don't. It, you don't really like like that would require them getting done in a quarter final. Who of the quarter final teams is going to do them? Like maybe maybe one of the Ulster, maybe an Armagh coming through a qualifier or a Donegal or even God maybe loud. A a God. no, but you know what I mean. Like <laughs> yeah. like who's going to beat them in an All Ireland quarter final? And it, won't, it, won't be, it wouldn't be a Galway, Rory, because if Galway yeah. if Galway don't win Connacht. Very hard to see how Galway would reinvent themselves. I mean, this is a massive year for them. They have to get out of Connacht, in my view. 
Sorry, Maliki. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, but but that's it. That, that's what that's what I've always thought about Dublin, even when they were going bad. Like, yeah, you like Brian Howard was excellent. Really, that excellent. was what I was. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was going to mean. I I, th- I thought his return to form class. was was yeah. Very Scully, Scully was very good too. Scully was Scully very was very tendons. good. Like that uh, goal that took. Very good. Yeah. Well, what I would thought was interesting about Howard was, you know, he's back playing in the forward line, uh, maybe set, maybe maybe midfield, sort of the half forward line. Whereas at the start option. of the league, he was playing at six, you know, and I, he's not that player, you know, he's too good. He's too good shooting from distance to be playing back there. So he was good. Fenton was good. Cormac Costello was very good. So they have that. Kilkenny, Jesus, Kilkenny was well marshaled now. By also, it's important, Melky, to say that Howard was able to play in the forwards because Tom Lahiff played at midfield and seemed yes. to partner Fenton well, which which has been a little bit of a conundrum for them. If it's not Howard, yeah, who is it? Ha- exactly, yeah. They just haven't worked out who who Fenton's partner is going to be. Like, and like, this Lahiff's, I think, is his third season in or around the place. And, and like, it, like, I'd say all along, everybody was kind of going, surely that guy's a midfielder. Well, what else would he be like? Look at the size of him. Look at the <laughs> yeah. way he runs. Like, look at, look at how he 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 mobilizes up and down the pitch. But they had him playing at five. They had him playing at seven. I think he was wing forward at one stage. But like, yeah, he, he looks like a midfielder. So you know, I, I don't know why they would overcomplicate it. Look, they're they're going to be one of the top four teams. Uh, but I uh, on the Monaghan side of things, I really think the Monaghan have really stagnated. Um, this last few years, I don't know. I don't see anything new from them. I think they've used the fewest players of any team in the top division. So yeah, like eventually it comes down to a numbers game a little bit. I think they've only used twenty four or twenty five players altogether. Um, and like, what's different about them? Like they, they they're newer players. Michal Banigan, like Michal Banigan, won a Sigerson with DCU. I, I think whoa, like it's nearly four or five years ago. So me, O'Bannigan's about 25, 26. Shane Carey's about 25, 26. Mm. I don't know that there's anything particularly fresh about them. I was looking, I, I I only saw the highlights last night, but I even looked through the through the report this morning. Huge amount of scores from freeze. Um, you know, Connor McCarthy got his goal, but like Conor McCarthy is the best forward in the Monaghan Club Championship, and he does an awful lot of defending for Monaghan, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, they are, I, I do, I, I, I fear they're on the, on the, on the other side of the mountain now. Uh, yeah, and, uh, twenty-four and points, uh, twenty-four points for Monaghan so like is, is a massive concession. That, that so, Kevin is the most Kildare have scored in the league game since they beat Kilkenny in nineteen ninety, <laughs> scoring four twenty-five. <laughs> Where do you get this stuff? It's fantastic. Uh, that's in our match report today from Jerry McNally. Um, I thought it, it caught my eye. But Rory, what also ca- catches your eye is that um, Daniel Flynn didn't play. Derek Irwin came in for him. Five points. Paddy Woodgate and Jimmy Highland. And their, their full forward line contributed 15 points. Yeah. 15 or without 16 points. Daniel yeah, Flynn. Without Daniel Flynn. It was, yeah. it was, it, it's some going. Like they they had to win. I think their need was greater. They were at home. They have had lots of positivity around their league campaign so far. Obviously, starting off with maybe a a, a game against Kerry that maybe they should have won. Then they got nothing up in Oma, where they probably felt they should have got something. And they've had like I mean they've played three matches in Newbridge, and they've had two wins two wins and 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 a draw so they're unbeaten there their problem really is when they hit the road and that's going to be an issue again for them this Sunday in terms of having to try and save themselves the question I suppose really I mean the game is in Carrick and isn't it it's in Park yeah. Sean McDermott yeah. so it's in Carrick and Shannon not that that makes any difference to Mayo because I think from what I gather from what I can gather Mayo are almost like vagabonds at the minute in terms of where they train. They have no permanent base, so it doesn't really bother me or where they go from one week to the next. But um, it'll just depend on what kind of motivation Mayo have to make a league final and what kind of team James Horn decides to put out. Um, But that's going to be uh, like, I mean, they'll have a chance. If they win, they're guaranteed to stay up. So it's a great card for them on that level. And then also maybe to get that sort of like they still haven't got that big away from home victory, you know that that sort of right. We're here, we're Division One. We can go on the road and we can win 
a game against a top class opposition. They still haven't really scratched that itch. And I think if they manage to do that this weekend, then I think just like we spoke about earlier in the year, then we may have a Leinster championship worth talking about. They could, if they win, make make the league final too. Could, uh, just, <laughs> you just bet me to it. Yeah, there's yeah. one, two, three, five, five teams outside of Kerry mathematically. Could all end up on seven anyway. points. Yeah, uh, can um, can squeeze into the final depending on results. <clears throat> Yeah. Beat one of them, obviously. It's, it just shows how fantastic the league is. I mean, you know, what a brilliant competition it is and just a real pity that it happens to be played mm-hmm. at a time of year. And again, Kevin, look, you were up there and Oma on Saturday, howling winds again. I mean, well, a, a, bitter, a bitter, a bitterly cold wind once the, yeah. once the blinding sun went in around uh, 6, 6 p.m. Yeah. It sounds almost poetic. The blinding sun went away and the howling wind came out. Yes. The, it was. It, it wasn't. As I said beforehand, I, I was probably doing what the ISPCC recommend you don't do, and I was bathing three children while half watching this game of football. But as you said, Kevin, I probably wouldn't have been too distracted by this game of football because because it, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest. Um, a slow enough start from from Mayo, and you would have thought Tyrone would see it out because that's something they're usually pretty good at. But they they managed to. They managed to confound themselves and make a game of it in the second half, which they probably shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. The drone definitely the better team uh, throughout their their first half. They were uh, quite eager. Actually, a friend of mine sent me a text saying, "How in the name of God could you say that Mayo were better in the second half when they scored a point in the last twenty five minutes or something?" But uh, I was at the same time, the bit he hadn't seen was how bad Mayo were in the first half. <laughs> I mean, anything in the second half is going to be better. It was a it was a very strange from the minute. Uh, uh, I, I saw the programme, well, I saw the team earlier. I was thinking, it's not his style to change it up much, James Horn. You know, what they print usually goes to post. And um, that was the case. But the team looked incredibly experimental for, you know, what was on the line. A victory would have put them to the final. Um, and uh, it was obvious that Tyrone were going to tear into this. Like the, Their need was, was massive. Mm. Um, and they did. And they show glimpses of it. And, and some of their best players were to the fore in that. But I, I'm not trying to package it now as anything other than it was a very mediocre uh, round six National League football game. The, you know, there wasn't a lot to see except the three or four best players on the Tyrone side returning to something like a bit of form. But the overall Tyrone effort was average enough now. And, yeah. and that's all it needed to be because Mayo were completely average. Maliki, it's it, like we've been talking about... James Horan's squad building uh, mm. agenda over the last couple of years. And to, in a lot of respects, it's been quite successful. Um, everyone can have an off day at the office, which is exactly what happened with the Mayo forwards. Ryan O'Donoghue was the only one to score from play of their starting forwards. That's a concern. Well, yeah. Uh, I think there's a little a little sprinkle this weekend, in certainly in the Division 1 games. There's a little touch of what we were talking about at the start with the Hurling League. You know the compactness of the of the schedule this year. The cha- championship is four weeks away. Mm. Um, I don't know that James Horn particularly wants the complication of having to play in a league final. Um, I don't which, know which, that, goal, which goal we now have. Which goal we now have? I don't know that there's that many of the Division One team. I think I think uh, if Mayo had been in relegation trouble. I think they'd have played a different team on the weekend. I think that's fairly obvious. Um, so I, I think teams want to stay in Division One. That's something. So they fight for that. And but at the top of the table, I think I think third and fourth place is nearly nearly more attractive. Ah, uh, yeah, but teams. the lads selected want to make an impression, don't they? Sure, but they're just not as good, Mikey. Like, mm, it was. That's my point. Yeah, but this is it. You know, like like you you. T- what what's the Mayo forward line for for the Galway game? Uh, like if Killian is back, well we don't know about that. But so he's, 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 the, he's the ex. Jim O'Connor. Jim O'Connor will be there. Jason uh, Doherty will be there. Jason Doherty will be there. Uh, one of uh, like Brian Walsh or or, or one of those. Connor guys. Loftus perhaps. Connor Loftus. Yeah, no, yeah. they're sort of interchangeable. Uh, O'Donoghue O'Donoghue will be there, and uh, Aidan O'Shea will come off the bench. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think that Mayo forward line is reasonably not, not set in stone, it, but it, but it was like, actually. I think he knows what his six are. It was actually more more um, uh, underlined in the defensive selection. Um, mm. I'd argued, and I, I'm pretty sure I was right the previous week 
Mayo had nearly their full defensive line out down yeah, in Tralee. Absolutely. And and against Tyrone, well, I I had it down at two, Oshin Mullen and uh, Robbie Keegan. Henley. Uh, sorry, and, and uh, Lee, Keegan. Lee Keegan, and then Robbie Henley went out. So I, I reckon maybe Mayo had two out, you know, depending yeah, on what they're going to do with Aidan O'Shea. Um, I don't think he's going to be six. Well, geez, I don't think he's going no. to. Well, how how would ever was even that? Nah, I, I, I think looked. they're just trying to get headlines with their team. They named their team earlier than any other team. As you say, it's usually the yeah. team that plays. I actually mm-hmm. think they're just throwing something in every week to get headlines. I think this is all part of Mayo's publicity strategy. But, don't, but wouldn't you, <laughs> like, for a very experienced player, I think I'd be going to my my manager and saying, "I've been thrown around everywhere. Like every yeah. week, I seem to have a different jersey. Yeah. I mean, no matter how versatile you are, are you know where you are with your career, you want you want you want the reassurance of well, this is the yeah. position I'm in. The championship, well, the championship is only you know f- uh, four weeks away for Mayo Galway. Because Curry, it should be noted, the Curry boys." I think there's a long break, Rory. Correct me they've, if I'm wrong. Yes. They've, they've, nearly, they've nearly six weeks yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and, yeah. and with all due respect to playing Cork. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 I think you're right about it. That means no Kevin, respect, obviously. Kevin, I, I think you're right. Like, I, I think for uh, all, whatever they do with him, all the throwing around, I think, again, some things are just kind of obvious. Like, his role is going to be the last 25 minutes of games playing as a defensive midfielder. Uh, gathering possession, processing ball, definitely, definitely not shooting. That is going to be... But it feeds feeds this frenzy in Mayo about where's his best position. I don't think think, think James Horn is one bit uh, frenzied or upset. I think James Horn has a very clear idea of how Aidan O'Shea will be employed from here on in. I think a big what I would consider a big plus, and I'd be interested in your view on this, Kevin, um, a big plus, and I, you know, it, it has been the consistency, consistent form of Jordan Flynn at midfield, mm-hmm. who looks nailed on now to partner Matthew Ruan. Yeah. And I, I, I'm really delighted for that, for that guy, because I think if we remember, he was sent off in an under-20 final for no, pushing, push, the referee, pushing the referee yeah. about yeah. four or five years ago. And yes, then and against Kildare mm-hmm. in an under-20 mm-hmm. final. And then a cup, and then his inter-county senior career started. And I think he might have been sent off. He was sent off twice. again, yeah. yeah. He might yeah. have even been sent off twice. And now, when 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 a, a young lad starting off has his career pockmarked by a couple of major disciplinary indiscretions, mm-hmm. it can sometimes mean, from a management's perspective, well, I can't trust this guy. And I think for this fella, like he scored two points again, he has played every minute of the last three or four league games. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there's a real maturity about his performances now. I think it's, you know, he's he he complements um, the sort of dynamism that Matthew Ruan gives, and I think that's a major major yeah. plus for Mayo. And I'm delighted for him because I know yeah. he copped he probably copped a lot of stick, Kevin, when 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 a lot of that stuff st- happened re- around the beginning of his intercounty career. Yeah, and he was very unfortunate. We were covering the game in Tralee. I don't know if you were working on that one, Rory, or not, uh, on the Saturday. No, it was Wes, actually. And the the halftime insert was, by the, who, I, I can't just recall who was doing it now. I think Pat was on it and someone else. But the um, they, they did uh, Mayo's turnovers. And, and they, were, they might as well have called them Jordan Flynn's turnovers. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he featured, uh, just unluckily, I, I, I'm, there was, I'm sure there was no madness whatsoever, but he had had some horrific ones in that first half. And yet he went down in the second half to really get stuck into the game. And I was making that point uh, on Saturday night in the uh, in the aftermath of the game, that Mayo would be delighted. James Horne would be delighted with the way he has come through that. And all He's the shown he great character, he, you know. He surely, he surely did. And he made a couple of, you know, carrying the ball into traffic when he didn't need to do it. He, he's just not polished article yet. And how could he be? He's only getting a run at it. Um, but he has power, he's pacey, he can kick Great a engine. point, and, and he's horse power strong. I mean, he's he'd tear into anything. He's mm. he is a strong unit. And uh, and he seems to complement Matthew Rand very nicely. Um just he has to polish his game up a little bit more. So you know, he's not giving away the ball cheap. Just doesn't, yeah, he does he does take it into into tackles and he does he, yeah. But like I mean, that's 
just comes with experience, really. Well, I would happens, imagine, yeah. and that'll yeah. come, you know. Yeah. No, I'm delighted for him. He really, yeah. he, he's he, he put in a, a great shift against Tyrone. Mayo's mid, Mayo's midfield is solid. They're very pleased with that. Um, they they kind of know their back line from the Kerry game. And it's up front. Sure, here we are again now, yeah. forty years later. It's up front. Yeah. Oh, Tom, oh, Tommy you know, Conroy, where are you? Where, uh, where well, are yeah, where's Killian O'Connor? You know, Killian O'Connor hasn't been seen. His Achilles thing, is, yeah. is not going. Is not going to plan by all accounts. Like mm. imagine if if you had um, Ryan O'Donoghue, Tommy Conroy, Killian O'Connor, and they were in good shape and good form. So Jason um, Darty, Troy, yeah, Jason Darty, Kevin McLaughlin, you know, Kevin McLaughlin yeah. coming in. Like, Mayor Fairson, Mayor Fairson, lucky in, in, in you know yeah. regards Conroy obviously, and and Killian is is definitely a worry because even if he comes back now for round seven, which I don't think he will, but even if he did, the gap to Galway is probably too tight. To There's a reason to qualify for a league final, Kev. Give Killian O'Connor a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one team who have qualified for league final is Kerry. Um, I was watching this one yesterday, uh, Rory, and um, they haired into an early lead. Um, it looked like it'd be all over by half time. Got very feisty uh, mm-hmm. at half time. Jack Savage got a black card just before just before the break, and our man made a real game of it in the second half. And uh, if it wasn't for their poor goalkeeper slipping and allowing Lazarus to score the easiest goal he'll score all season, and as <laughs> Maliki noted on uh, Twitter, celebrating as if he scored the All Ireland winner, which is just fantastic. Yeah. Um, Kerry, I've noticed Rory. They just they. They kind of, they beget open games of football, end-to-end stuff. They are, I know we often get accused of talking about Kerry a lot, et cetera, et cetera, but in fairness to them, they do tend to be involved in a lot of very interesting, entertaining games of football. They play a very open brand, but I think they've married that up now with a really good, really, really, really good, there's a good sense of um, solidity, I suppose, given we spoke about it last night on the show. I mean, their defence does look like it's kind of shored up. They're very mean at the back very stingy they're not coughing up easy chances they're disciplined they don't concede too many frees it's a nigh on impossible to score a goal against them um that's because they have two think, goalkeepers if, you know <laughs> and they have they, they, they they've got a very they, they've got plenty to pick from in there look i we were waxing lyrical about them a couple of weeks ago and i said they won't be beaten all year and i stand by that um i think they're just there's a there's like there's a time for Kerry, you know. Ker- uh, we like I mentioned, obviously the famous minor five in a row team. Well, the first of those was in 2014, which mm. is eight years ago. These players have now reached a level of maturity where they're now there's huge pressure on them, but there is an expectancy. I think there's an expectancy within the camp. I think that's the reason Jack O'Connor was brought back. I think their attitude is they're going to go gung-ho for every league game and try and win the league because they know they have a five or six week resting period. They'll have plenty of confidence going into the Munster Championship where they'll probably hose their way through, let's be perfectly honest. And then they'll be tuning up, getting ready for a tilt at the All-Ireland, which is three big games again. That's Kerry season wrapped up in a nutshell. And I think they're on a mission. And I think this, it's going to, to my mind, it'll be very, very difficult for any team to beat them because I think they have all... They have pretty much every box ticked. They're going to rack up a massive score. They look pretty solid at the back. Now, test-wise, people can say, you know, look, they play Dublin at a low web. We've got Tyrone coming down to Killarney next weekend. You know, look, Tyrone maybe aren't, you know, pulling up trees either at the minute. But they've gone on the road. Like, they've gone up to Monaghan, you know, to Inneskeen, won comfortably. They go to Armagh yesterday, you know, a packed house. Yeah, they over eleven thousand. Really, I, I I felt that they were, I felt they there was more in Kerry. Oh, there was know? without a shadow. There was of more in them, like, yeah. and they, they they were kind of only in about a third or fourth gear. So I think everything is going really well. I think Jack O'Connor will have them in a really, you know. I think from what I can gather, Jack is much more chilled out about it, and I think that's kind of effused a much greater sense of calm amongst them because I do think they were a bit edgy over the last three years. Those three defeats have scarred them. Obviously, the 19 drawn final to lose to Cork in that month, in that famous night down in, in, in November, and then last year. And there could have been a perception drift out there that this is a jittery bunch. And I think, in fairness, that's why Jack O'Connor was brought back. Just to steady all of that. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing now. That mm. they can, they've now got the 
perfect blend. And I think it's going to be a very, they're going to be an extremely difficult uh, animal to topple. Yeah. Maliki, um, there's obviously a lot of talk about Marma at the start of the season. Um, mm. They had a lot of very eye-catching results. It was fair enough. Um, would you be concerned that they were maybe toyed with a little bit here by a Kerry team who maybe got into fourth gear, but definitely didn't hit fifth gear? No. Well, I mean, like even when people were getting excited about Arma, they weren't, you know, they, were, they weren't saying that, you know, this is, this is the next uh, five in a row team, you know, like, <laughs> Our, you know, Armagh have the Could like, they win an Ulster title, in your opinion? Well, you see, this is the thing. That's the next step for Armagh mm. is winning, winning, winning Ulster. Um, I, I, my only fear for Armagh at all is like they're they're near enough my favorite team in Ulster, apart from my own and my owner in bad way at the minute. So maybe I'm turning off them. But uh, <laughs> like they play, they play fantastic football, and they they're nearly. They're nearly too good to win an Ulster title. Like it'll be bet out of them. Like they, you know, they they have to slog through. They like they'll have Donegal first up up in uh, Bally Buffet where uh, they don't they don't lose. They certainly don't lose in the Ulster Championship. And um, like it's a slog to win Ulster. You know, like you're gonna have to win games that are now. In fairness, last year's competition was was wild and and, and exotic and open and all of that. But I don't know. I think they're. I don't think I think they'd nearly take as much out of yesterday. I think they nearly take more out of yesterday than Kerry will. Like mm. Kerry, it's just business. But Kerry's horizons are are far beyond our mouths. Like Armagh are not going to win the All Ireland. I wouldn't have thought. Um, they might stop somebody winning the All Ireland. They're that kind of team. I think the kind of team, exactly as I was saying earlier, could catch somebody at an All Ireland quarter final uh, and do them, and then lose by a couple of points in, in a semi final because. Like what they don't have yet is experience. Like we're, you know, we we listed out, we more or less listed out the Mayo team there earlier. Every one of those guys have played in two All Ireland finals at least, mm. and and they're they're as young a team as Armagh, you know. Uh, whereas Armagh's experience is the the younger guys have been around through like two years of COVID, like getting their getting their sea legs under them. So when it goes into a championship run through qualifiers, all that sort of stuff, I don't know, it might be a year early for them. I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they could win Ulster, but I could see them getting caught, getting to an all Ireland quarterfinal. That, mm. that, I, I, that's the kind of year I sort of envisage for them. Um, Kevin, we'll, we'll move on to uh, Division 2, and uh, <clears throat> your uh, team you'll be very interested in now in four or five weeks' time, obviously, Galway. Um, I tuned into Galway Bay for this yesterday, Um and uh, it was astonishing the first half to listen to it. It was a, you know, kind of a little bit matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, you know, Galway have a stiff breeze on their back, and um, you know the, you know that. And it turned out in the end that Derry actually chose to play into the wind, which is an astonishing decision to make. But um, Galway they won four eleven to twelve points. Um, they absolutely and utterly destroyed the Derry kick out. Um, when Derry did manage to secure possession, they were swarmed. Um, it was it, it just seemed like a really remarkable performance. Four different goal scorers. Um Paul Conroy before sending off was just superb. I suppose the one flying the ointment might be Damien Comer going off injured and with his injury profile anytime he goes off injured, Galway supporters have their heart in their mouths. Yeah, they were they were they were they were very good. Because that was that wouldn't have been a simple a simple game for them. But then of course Shane McGuigan uh, being suspended immediately swung us really because he's he, he's the score getter. Just on the against the wind one, it's a, a, an interesting one. Um like the the managers or the coaches uh, manual tells you you only play against the wind if you have three David Cliffords that you're thinking of having a good look at in the second half. Something like that. Like other than that, why would you play against the wind? You know, in terms of your morale. Is that in the coaching manual somewhere, Ken? Is there uh, like, is there, is there a sort of a rule no, one no, by I, one? I, 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 you know, I, I, option I, to play with or against the wind, always with or. You know. uh, like, uh, like there used to be an old school of thought that ah, uh, you'd be getting rid of the dirty diesel in the first fifteen minutes mm. and kicking bad wide, so wait till you're warmed up and use it in the second half. Mm. But the problem is the game has changed so dramatically that uh, and the lots wind of can change. Play. Yeah, well, of course it can. <laughs> that's the other thing, but um. The, the whole idea of having a target, like if you if you have a six, seven point lead at half time in the modern game, that's not impossible. That's not at all impossible. 
to defend in the second half against any class of a wind. Um, and and we, we we witnessed that a good few times this weekend, um, that there was gaps that, yeah, could have been made up, like the Mayo one in Oma, but but they couldn't, uh, because the five or six point lead was was decent, or four, four or five point lead. But um, I thought in, in, in a general sense that this, is, this was always going to be a big year for Galway. Had to be. In both the league and the championship, Galway, Galway couldn't afford to just wander through the league and you know win three, lose four, that type of thing. Because the morale of of the Galway supporter uh, is a delicate thing at the best of time, and he has to be nourished and and brought forward, or he won't show up at all for the championship. Yeah. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the uh, the draw with with Mayo was brilliant for Galway that the championship draw, uh, in that they had immediate focus for their season uh, and the gap then between league and that game was was uh, short enough to say we have to leave the league in form with a, with, a, with a team that's consistent and selected and we know our best 15 and our three or four subs and I think they're, they've ticked all their all those boxes uh, because uh, I was noting they are the biggest scorers in the league, am I they're right? The only team, they're the only team six from yeah. six. What kind no, of a team do they put? What kind of a team do they put out, knowing that they could be playing Ross Common again the following week? Well, that's league? a great question <laughs> because, uh, well, I was, I was kind of laughing to a few lads last night saying that uh, sh- surely, surely they'll put out a, a a B team and cut down on their expenses for next year. You'd have three Connacht teams in in, in the in the in, in the Division One. one. Yeah. <laughs> and there have been overnights and the county board would love them. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, they, they had a strong team out again uh, yesterday. A lot of their, a lot of their players, the, the Conroys, Comer, uh, Matthew Tierney, Killian McDade, very, very, uh, very decent, caught the eye at, at halfback. They are all typical good Galway footballers. Mm. They have plenty of style, plenty of confidence in their own, in their own ability. And they're putting up big scores. Of course, Shane Walsh wasn't there yesterday. Was that a kind of an injury? But I just, look, he, I, I, he I, just wasn't. He was pulled. He was he was a late change. Pulled, was mm, and yeah. I don't I don't believe half these injuries because when I saw Clifford coming out with the two hands after getting the goal, I was sure one of them was in plaster of Paris. From, yeah, yeah, there was rumors <laughs> flying around. Before, and and bro- yeah. <laughs> he broke in his arm, and the whole mm. of the country was on. Well, I heard the arm had fallen off, Kev. <laughs> I heard the he arm had fallen off. off. Yeah. So, um, geez, I, I was amazed to see, to see him coming on. I think it's a blood sub. But where did he come from? But um, no, I think Galway are in are, are in good shape. They're if, if they sat down to plan it six months ago, they couldn't have planned it any better. They're getting ready to play Mayo and that will be a massive game because Mayo Mayo are a tried and trusted division one formidable outfit and yeah. they have their sights on big things too so that that's that's going to be a cracker but they coasted through this division a, a big shout out lads to my own my former team Roscommon who yeah. have mm-hmm. kind of under the radar I mean the game against off yesterday that put it away by half time yep uh, they have been very very With 14 steady. men yeah and all the attention really was on Gall with Derry, really. Did Ross uh, come in and have someone sent off? Go ahead. In the 14th minute, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, I'm sure. And yeah. uh, so so that that's uh they have done tremendously well to get bring this down to to the last game of the season again of the league season against against Galway. And every it's here in the hide. Be a big crowd at that now, and we'll be looking all week now to see what, what do Galway actually put out. That'll probably tell us a lot about what they're thinking. But like in fairness, Galway have earned the right to put out yeah, whoever they want to put out. Exactly. Yeah, so the, 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 fixtures, the fixture list was kind to Galway, Maliki, in that they kind of they built up their points in the first four rounds and then they had, or sorry, five rounds and then they their two closest challengers in the last two games. Exactly. So there is an advantage to that as long as you do your job in the first four rounds and now they're, uh, sorry, first five rounds. Um, so yeah, well, they're reaping what they sow. Yeah, I mean, you could say the same about Derry, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like, they, um, I was at the Derry Roscommon game the week before. Uh, like, gee, Kevin is right. Like, that, that's a good Rossi team. You know, they mm-hmm. have a couple of, of new guys there that uh, that look very good. A young young, young was, very, was very, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it, and I heard he was good yesterday again. Yeah. He came off he the bench. He was marvelous. Against, he was marvelous in the in the Sigerson. In Sigerson, he was fantastic. Yeah, and he came yeah. off the bench against Derry and, like, uh, funny enough, Derry had played against the wind in the first half against Roscommon. I don't know if, if that was by choice or not, yeah. but they were four points down at half time. 
And then Roscommon came out and scored the first two points of the second half. And Heenan was was fantastic in that sort of opening period. And it looked like a six point lead uh, against the wind uh, or was going to be too much for Derry to bring back. But anyway, that was the week before. But I think um, I think yeah, Galway got their business done. Um, that, that that was a. I must say I had to look at the result again when I saw what happened to Derry yesterday because that's not a Derry. That hasn't been the dairy of this league so far. Like mm. they're the most miserly defense up until yesterday. They had barely given. They could. They couldn't get out of their defense it. yesterday. They they couldn't get the ball into the into the Galway half of the field for the first half. But it was yeah, partly so down to the wind, strange. but also just how Galway attacked them. It was a remarkable. Yeah, their, the their, thing, kick-out, the thing, their kickout collapsed really, didn't? Yeah, they? yeah. And the, now the thing was for Derry that that draw against Roscommon uh, was was a great result for them because it kept them, uh, you know, ahead of Roscommon. Um, and so I think if if Derry win this weekend, that'll that'll do them. Well, I suppose it'll depend on what, what happens in the other. Yeah, the, the, the it does. Yeah, it, it's in Ross Common's own and hands if, now. If, if Ross, I put it put it an easier way. If Ross Common beat Galway, Ross Common, Common are all done. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. At the other end, Rory, we have to mention it. Um, hey, listen, that Rebels of Yeah, yeah. I watched uh, it. I watched actually watched. It was, uh, it was it was a lot of games coming in at the same time. So. Can he clone Stephen Sherlock? Yeah. No. Like there's still there look there would still be question marks about him. I think you um uh you you can you way too much credence upon a down team that's at a similarly low ebb and in terms of yeah, like, he, the one thing I would say was he drifted all over the place. He you know, like he was listed obviously to play on the inside line, but he I mean like at certain points you were seeing him inside in his own full back line and everything. So he was kind of given license to kind of get get a to get to basically a free role, which I think suits him because he's a very good footballer. The issue that he does have is he lacks a little bit of a yard of pace. So when you're playing somebody on the inside line and in an inter-county level, if you can't get out in front, it can be very difficult to actually win your fair chunk of primary ball. And then that obviously has a knock-on effect in terms of what you'll post scoring-wise. Whereas the fact that yesterday he was almost given a free role I think he got on a huge amount of ball and he made a lot. He's an excellent footballer, a proper footballer. So I think that definitely helped. And the former Cahill man, he was good yesterday, scored three good points from play as well. Um, Cork's still not without their problems, though I wouldn't be getting too carried away. I think what it does do is what a game next next Sunday in O'Connor Park. Like, mm. you know, absolutely. Ch- championship fair, like, you know. I think you put your finger on it there, Rory, though, like, like Sherlock was 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 very good night. Now I only saw the highlights, hmm. but God, everything looked very slow. Slow. Like yeah. not I don't and I don't I don't mean specifically him. I mean yeah. the whole sort of action. Or right? like like he scored a couple of points there that he he nearly could have bent down and tied his lace before getting yeah. up to kick it again. You know everything. Don't just... Maliki in a in a when when things matter. You know, and you've young Sherlock mm-hmm. who starts drifting. You know, Kerry put Gavin White on him, or or mm-hmm. Mayo put Paddy Durkin on him, and the next thing, pace. This is a huge issue, but yeah. not only that, the fellow that's winning the ball out in front now can play. Yeah, um, yeah. he'd go yeah. up the other in the field and yeah. kick a point. And yeah. like that's that's the standard. You're you're measuring that now he was very classy, but you're yeah. measuring against a down team that has just Throw fallen in. apart really. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. they're yeah. in yeah. division and, three. And and they were look, they were unlucky yesterday down the Michal Martin made a very good save with a one on one. It, mm. There was a really good goal chance at another stage, which just hit the kind of bottom of the stanchion right. And then there was another ball came back off the post. If it falls into the down player's hands, it's in the back of the net. But it was. It was a real scrap between two teams. I think it was a significant game for Cork to win, given the fact that they've now given themselves a chance. But again, two men and his dog turned up to watch it. The match at one o'clock on lunchtime when the hurlers are below in Wexford Park. Um, I no, think Cup qualifier. No, 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 no local coverage on radio, um, which I thought was bizarre. Second half was on the radio. <laughs> it was the second half, was it? Yeah, yeah they didn't bother because it was a one o'clock throw in. Yeah. They didn't move the uh, country and western show on C one o three, so they came in at half time. Quite right. Yeah, quite right. Yeah. Lads, lads had to finish their dinner. <laughs> I saw Mick Foley. I saw Mick Foley giving out. All right, I, he flicked on County Sound, and it was Big yeah. Tom or something was going on. He wasn't yeah. happy. <laughs> but in fairness, they did yeah. stick with the foot. They could have gone to the meaningless hurling match in yeah. Mexford Park, but they. Yeah. Stuck with the football, so that's something, isn't it? Yeah, look, yeah. yeah, it's, look, it's, yeah. The, the game next week is in O'Connor Park. Is that what you're saying? In O'Connor yeah. Park, so that's Ooh, basically wow. you know winner, winner, tasty. winner takes all, and um, it'll be a fa- fascinating game. And it's a 50 50, you know. Let's mm-hmm. be perfectly yeah. like, let's yeah. the, the, oh, yeah. you know, make any bones. This is that's no, it, this is awfully we'll see Cork 
just as much as a beatable side as a vice and there's an awfully coach with very good knowledge of the Cork players as well, isn't there? Correct. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So yeah, so look, I think look, giving themselves a chance from a down perspective, it's just it's, it's really disappointing. I think all they can do now really is dust themselves down and get ready for the Ulster Championship and try and put in as good a chance, good a performance as they can there. Yeah, they're heading for Talchin Cup, unfortunately. I'd say. Right. Lads, we're, we're, we're in the home st- straight, so we'll, we'll mention Division 3 and those teams trying to get out of the Talchin Cup or going to miss out on the Talchin Cup is another, <laughs> you know, that's another perspective on it, you know, that, yeah. you know, if you're Fermanagh, should you be that furious about that ghost point yesterday or would actually the Talchin Cup be the perfect place for a team like Fermanagh? I'm not doing Fermanagh down at all here. I'm just saying that is it that big a prize for the team on the bubble to be going to Sam Maguire and be guaranteed, you have to say, fewer games than they would get if they were in the Talchin Cup. Maliki, where do you stand on this Talchin Cup it's, debate? It's a funny thing, because like, I did a piece on this last week or the week before. Very and good. Yeah. I, I had a good chat with John Mohan about it. Like, and it, well, when, it, is the, it, when is the launch? <laughs> exactly. When <laughs> is the launch? You know? Like, it's such a, it, like I, I do have a certain sympathy with the GAA over it, because it is hard to promote a, a competition that teams by definition, don't want to play it. Like they want, they want to, they want better things for themselves. And the thing from just from talking to play, uh, managers that, uh, around the teams that are around the bubble, there, like you know, they're sort of basically saying, well, look, it's better for us to be playing in Division Two. Never mind the championship. Mm. Yeah, like it's not like better it, quality of opposition. Bigger you gates know, for your county board. Yeah. Bigger profile, we, better referees, better, you know. And like that's there's... how you progress, you know. Yeah. Like, you look at a team like Derry that were in Division 4 a couple of years ago. They're fighting now to get into Division 1 now. Now, look, there isn't a huge Derry following anyway, one way or the other, so it wouldn't really matter if they were nearly playing in All-Ireland Finals. But but for the players themselves, to, that sort of progression is is important. Um, and the Talton Cup will happen whether it will happen. I Like... If 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 everything froze right now, I would back Limerick to win the Talton Cup, but they probably won't be playing in it. They probably will. They will probably get a, a promotion and get dusted in Munster and maybe win a qualifier, or probably not, because the teams that they would hope to beat in qualifiers won't 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 be in there. So um, but they will then start next year in division two. And it's a while since Limerick were, were up that high in the divisions. And that's the kind of thing. Billy Lee's been there for a long time. He has been, they've been progressing and progressing every year. They are obviously, they're a team on an upward curve. They want to play in Division 2. And the championship probably just isn't as, as important to them. Yeah. Um, it, it's very tight, Kev, as we, we always mention. Division Division 3 always is the one you can you can throw a tea towel over. Um, Lowther, Lowther in pole position. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they're they're away. They're in Fortress Ockram next week. But um, Wicklow did, you know, Wicklow. There, there's a death rattle in Wicklow yet, so you you can't say it's, no game in Division Three can ever be called a foregone conclusion. It's yeah. it's kind of where well, you're if, at. If you take if you take Loud out of it, the next four are playing each other. Yeah, which mm. is amazing. You know, it really mm. makes it uh, come to the boil, doesn't? It? And then you have throw in the Wicklow Loud one. Where there's a fair bit at stake for Wicklow, isn't that right? Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah, it's 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 an amazing. This is the league. This is this is what's so fantastic. This is why we, you know, keep saying it is our best competition, and it is by, it by, is. A, by a long shot. Yeah, and there, as Maliki's pointed out, Rory, you know, it does matter more because you know I can make the argument about the Talton Cup's a better place to develop than. Sam Maguire, but the counter argument is we'll have more games in the league next year and we'd much rather be in Division 2 than Division 3. So the Charleston Cup maybe is not counterproductive. I don't want to slam it yet before the launch. Um, but The point um, is, Rory, or sorry, Mikey, but before you go to Rory, the point is we don't know. Yeah. Like we, we mm. were, we're saying all of this. The uh, league is uh, a known uh, known. A known known. But like there will be a dinner dance in some county in December where the the pride of place will be the cup will be at the top table and it will be the Talton Cup and be that in wherever the hell it is be that in Limerick or Louth or somewhere and they lads could be going afterwards do you know what that was a brilliant year that was a great run we had okay we didn't get promoted to Division Two but Jesus that was great crack and didn't we play our uh, our Talton Cup final 
uh, the day of the All Ireland semi final, and there were sixty thousand people in the crowd, and we got live on TV goal. as well as both and semi-finals. you get you get a, a trip for the team and more bonding and getting and all together. that sort of stuff. And, and maybe and maybe you know th- th- this is the point we just don't know. But maybe at the end of the year they're saying, "Well, Jesus, that was great for us, and we'll we we'll, we'll go mad for now for we'll bury into the league now this year. We're not playing in the top. We're we're get we're getting out of Division Three this year." You, like it could be, you know, yeah. we just don't know. We're sitting here and that's why I, I that's why I I really don't want to talk badly about it at all because I think it could be a great thing. It but could right be. Now we, right now we have you'd, the clue. You'd hope that it is. The, the fear though, as, as you know, Mal, yeah. is, I mean, look, if you were to look at it now, you'd say, right, who'd be, you know, favourites heading into Cavan obviously would be one of the teams that would probably yeah. fancy their chances mm. of winning it, I'm sure. Well, Down um, are definitely in it and now. Down, and yeah. Down, will, Down are in it. So, like, they, they, they'd be right. They'd be feeling that they'd have a good chance of winning it. But then the issue is, as we all know, is as soon as you get bet out of the Ulster Championship, how many of these guys book their flights to the USA so and head off to head off to America, given that none of them have traveled for the last two to three years. That's the worry. <clears throat> and it's whether or not they can be enough of an enticement to keep them here to play in this competition. And I think that's going to be the challenge for the GAA. Yeah. Um, I remember you will not talk about this until you have to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, just, it's a bit like Fight Club. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um you mentioned the Cavan there. We'll just finish up we'll finish up. Um we kind of all expected Cavan to bounce back and they have bar- barring a, a fairly unusual set of results now uh, no, next weekend. Up. Jesus, you weren't saying that halfway through the mm. second half yesterday though. Mm. Yeah, the, the yeah. London were it was remarkable. Mm. Were, they, were they were the trailing? Um, it was very tight coming down to coming down the yeah. stretch, but like the only it wasn't London tight at half time, and London came yeah. back at them fierce, yeah. Yeah. fierce hard. And, um, like that division four has been hilarious. Mm, I it thought has. I I must give a shout out to Tomas McCarthy, the great Waterford local reporter, mm. who was pointing out over the we did a piece uh, uh, in the local press in Waterford saying that some ridiculous stat that the Waterford footballers have had twenty three or twenty two one or two point defeats in the last few years like it's ridiculous so how they, have, they have four sent off yesterday they, for, they had three, three red or... cards and one black card they finished mm. with 11 men and still only lost by a point yeah lost 15 points to one 11 to yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> an, an outrageous yeah. example of soccer style in the GAA a collective <laughs> yeah. team attempt at soccering yeah. I do think I do think the fixture fixture making next weekend look the reality is to well, that has to change that it? has to move <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, London, London I, think, I think for the integrity, boat. yeah, yeah, I think for the integrity of the competition, it would be fairer if all the matches threw in at the same time. I also think it would probably solve a big problem for the GA themselves because they obviously need to fix the Waterford Wexford game uh, for somewhere in Thurles is of the obvious place, given the fact that you will still need lights next week because of the fact that uh, the clocks don't go back until yeah. Sunday and these games will probably be played on a Saturday, but. Um, uh, it, it, it may come back to just what you mentioned, Kevin. Just logistics. If London have their flights booked and a night out with coppers uh, yeah. planned, but on is Saturday that t- if Tipperary <laughs> win that game, the three games on Sunday have nothing riding on them? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, if Tip yeah, win, yeah. and that that's that. Like Division Four it's, doesn't it's, deserve it's, to be yeah. certain, to, to be treated wrong. like that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And lads, can I make one? Just I know you're trying to wrap now very quickly, Mikey. Um, yeah. You, you, we we kind of raced over it. The Fermanagh non-point. Mm. Uh, is, are, are there legs in that this week? I mean, I know it's not championship, so you can't give a rematch, but could there be a replay Wednesday night or something? I don't know how how, how no. that pans out. But I mean, it was clearly shown, correct me, I know it was grainy and all I that. All-Ireland hurling good. semifinals have been decided by umpiring mistakes and nothing you know came out of it I, I don't see what can happen Rory can anything happen no I wouldn't say anything no 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 they can't really okay. there won't be any appeals or anything like that the one thing you would obviously say is look um, it looked like a point now we got caught in a situation like this before in relation to using footage no this was our own footage actually or I think Paul Brown from Limerick scored a goal against it was against Westmead as well funny enough but this was in hurling and I was convinced and I was like, that's, 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 that's a goal. That's a goal. And apparently it wasn't a goal. Um, and we went hammer and tongs on the Sunday game that night. And of course the following day, an angle surfaced from the opposite side of the field, which showed that the umpires got it correct. Do you know that's what I mean? That's a Pruder GA film. 
Yeah, and <laughs> and 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 you just you just need to be a small bit careful on that because you can get caught sometimes. But in fairness, on this one, look, I went frame by frame, blew it up the whole lot. Yeah, the ball looked like it went inside the post. Was there any uh, protest? I didn't notice. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yes, there was. Oh, there was. I, okay. Yeah, okay. I rang locally just to see what was the reaction after the game. And the ref had quite the testing time getting out, which is unfortunate as well. You know what I mean? But uh, I think it's, um, yeah, it's it's The players at the time, again, I didn't notice in the footage. I was kind of watching it. We didn't have a camera there. That footage that was supplied to us by Joe Tracy from Fermanagh County Board, and it was only something we ran in because of the significance of it. But I think the, the, you know, yeah, like the ref, you know, it was pretty hot and heavy, you know, as... uh, as the, as, as, as the ref was uh, disappearing down the tunnel, which again is unfortunate, but look, yeah. this goes back to like this, this will surface in the championship lads. You know, you are mm. still, um, you are still dealing with an, a, a, an element of human error here that will happen from time to time. Now I know yeah. people have mentioned TMOs and VARs and all of that. And of course, look, there's all problems associated with that too, in terms of where you draw the line, but um, this will happen again. And it's just, Look, it's just the nature of it. Like people will make mistakes. Cancel the cancel the point though. A lot is a tough one to swallow. Of all the yeah. things, the yeah. score is the score is the score. You know. Yeah, indeed. Okay, lads, we'll uh, leave it at that. Thank you, Maliki. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Rory. And we'll be back Where's on that? Thursday to preview uh, the football and the, the very meaningful semis. hurling semi-finals and oh, yeah, the actually sarcasm aside very meaningful relegation playoff as well and oh, the no, promotion playoff from 2A so there is there is proper hurdle Maliki don't worry about it oh I'm uh, sure the t- I'm sure the ticket prices will reflect <laughs> reflect the, <laughs> the raise in the stakes yeah. all right um, thank you lads and we'll catch you again later in the week good luck bye how much longer will the referee allow Dublin lead by a point and there's the whistle it's over it's over we earned it by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us what I love in hurling I love players that will never give in he hits it he hits it it's over the bar oh holy Moses